So, you know, antioxidants and their role in patients in skin of color is really a broad topic that you can go in multiple directions with. And my interest in this topic is particularly in using antioxidants for my patients with vitiligo, as well as for using antioxidants in my patients who have melasma and hyperpigmentation. It's almost two different ends of a spectrum. In vitiligo, we know that there's lots of different things in our therapeutic armamentarium to try to bring the pigmentation back for these patients. Topical steroids, calcineurin inhibitors, systemic steroids, phototherapy. I mean, there's lots of new things happening. In fact, right now we're doing a lot of studies on the JAK inhibitor drugs or the Janus kinase drugs, which show some really promising results. But one of the things that I'd like to focus on in vitiligo is to make sure my patient, as well as other clinicians know, that vitiligo really is a multimodal disease. It is not a monotherapy disease. So no matter what of these tools you pick, antioxidants, especially oral antioxidants, can be very helpful in potentially helping the patient gain pigment back faster. And two examples of this are using oral alpha lipoic acid combined with vitamin C and vitamin E, usually in a 100 to 200 milligram dose once a day. Studies have shown that that helps to increase the rate of narrowband UVB induced repigmentation, particularly of the head and neck. And then the other antioxidant that I use a lot is polypodium leucotomus, which is a fern extract from a fern plant originally from North and Central South America. And this has a really interesting role in vitiligo in my opinion, because as an antioxidant, we hope that it's helping to decrease free radicals, reactive oxygen species, and ultimately hopefully helping to buffer that sort of immune attack that the T cells are playing on the melanocytes. So I recommend patients also take oral polypodium leucotomus, usually 250 milligrams or 240 milligrams twice a day. Studies also have been published that show doing that compared to narrowband UVB alone makes the UVB work faster. The opposite side is in melasma. The ironic thing is I use polypodium leucotomus not only for vitiligo, but I also use it for melasma. And that's because it has multiple mechanisms of action. In melasma, it's very helpful because it helps to increase one's own internal UV protective factor. So let's say you have a melasma patient who's maybe non-compliant for a few days, forgets their sunscreen. The polypodium leucotomus oral, uh, oral supplement doesn't help to replace the sunscreen, but at least it helps to increase the body's own UV protective factor. So that way, if you forget to do a physical block or sunscreen application, you may be still getting some protection. And we know that in melasma, UV protection is of paramount importance because of the chronic nature of the disease. And then finally, the other two antioxidants that I find very promising in melasma and hyperpigmentation are vitamin C, particularly 5% ascorbic acid, as long as you can get a really nice stabilized formulation. And there's lots of different cosmeceuticals that have that. There was a nice study that I was able to quote in my session that was a split phase trial comparing 5% ascorbic acid to 4% hydroquinone. Obviously, it won't take a rocket scientist to figure out that 4% hydroquinone did better. But 5% ascorbic acid actually did pretty well in reducing the MOSI scores and mexometer density for these patients. So I think antioxidants, I think it's a broad topic, but for me in particular in skin of color, I use them orally for my patients with pigmentary diseases quite often. Well, in particular in vitiligo, we do know that once the skin is depigmented, it is more sensitive to sunburns. And we have to tell our patients they need to be really careful with photoprotection because a little bit of sun is actually good for vitiligo, but not enough to get a burn that's then going to kebnerize the disease and cause it to spread even further, which has happened in many cases. With polypodium leucotomus, for example, I like it in vitiligo because not only is it an antioxidant that helps to potentially help with the inflammatory component of vitiligo, but again, it helps to increase the body's UV protective factor and decrease that P53 induced DNA damage that happens when UV exposure. So I think there's a dual modal effect and I think it does help.